In the last section of the course, we worked with data and Excel tables. In this section of the course, we are going to perform calculations on data. In this first segment, we are going to name groups of data. I'm working with the vehicle miles sample file, and I created it by opening the vehicle miles underscore start exercise file and then saving it under the name of vehicle miles. First, we select cells C4 through G4, and we are intentionally leaving cell H4 out of the selection. Now, in the name box, at the left end of the formula bar, type V101 last week. There should be no spaces in the name, and the name must begin with a letter. When you press enter, Excel creates a named range named V101 last week. Now on the formulas tab, in the defined names group, click name manager. Doing so opens the name manager dialog box. Make sure that the V101 last week name is selected and that the range it refers to appears in the refers to box at the bottom of the dialog box. Now edit the range so that it refers to C4 through H4. When you click the checkbox, Excel updates the definition and the range now refers to cells C4 through H4. Click the close button to close the name manager dialog box and now select the cells C5 through H5. On the formulas tab in the defined names group click define name. That opens the new name dialog box. In the name field edit the name so that it reads V102 last week. Verify that the definition in the refers to box says miles last week C5 to H5 and click OK. When you do, Excel creates a new defined name with the name V102 last week. In this segment of the course, we created named ranges. In the next segment of the course, we are going to create formulas to calculate values. In the last segment of the course, we named groups of data. In this segment, we are going to create formulas to calculate values. For this exercise, you will use the IT expenses underscore start workbook. I've already opened it and saved it under the new name of IT expenses. If necessary, display the summary worksheet by clicking its sheet tab and then in cell F9, type equal C4. When you do, the value 385,671 appears in cell F9. That is the value in cell C4. Now select cell F9 and type equal SU. Excel erases the existing formula, and Formula Autocomplete displays a list of possible functions to use in the formula. In the Formula Autocomplete list, click Sum, and then press Tab. Excel changes the contents of the formula bar to equal sum followed by a left parenthesis. Now select the cell range C3 through C8, type a right parenthesis to make the formula bar's contents read equal sum C3 through C8, and press enter. Now the value 2,562,966 appears in cell F9. That is the sum of the values from C3 
through C8. Now, in cell F10, type equal sum, left parentheses, C4 through C5, right parentheses, and press enter. Select cell F10, and then on the formula bar, select the cell reference C4, and press F4. Excel changes the cell reference to dollar sign C, dollar sign 4, which is an absolute cell reference. Neither the column indicator or the row indicator will change if you copy that formula to another cell. Now select the reference C5 and press F4, which changes that reference to an absolute reference as well. Press Enter, and Excel accepts the formula. Now on the tab bar, click the June Labor Sheet tab. When you do, the June Labor Worksheet opens. Now in cell F13, type equal, sum, left parentheses, capital J. When you do, Excel displays an autocomplete list of all available items starting with the letter J. In this case, that is the table, June Summary. When you press Tab, Excel extends the formula to read equal sum, June Summary. Type a left square bracket, and then in the formula autocomplete list, click Labor Expense, and press Tab. Excel extends the formula to read equal sum, left parentheses, June summary, left square bracket, labor expense. Now type a right square bracket, followed by a right parentheses to complete the formula, and press enter. Doing so causes the value $637,051 to appear in cell F13. In this segment, we created formulas to calculate values. In the next segment, we are going to summarize data that meets specific conditions. In the previous segment of this course, we created formulas to calculate values. In this segment, we are going to summarize data that meets specific conditions. The exercise file we're going to use is packaging costs. I created it by opening the packaging costs underscore start sample workbook and saving it under this new name. First, in cell G3, we type the formula equal if, creating an if conditional formula, left parentheses, F3 greater than or equal to 35,000 and then a comma. Now, double quote, request discount, double quote, comma, double quote, no discount available, double quote, and a right parentheses. This is an if formula that checks if the value in cell F3 is greater than or equal to 35,000. If that condition is true, then cell G3 displays request discount. If that condition is not met, in other words, if the value is less than 35,000, then the formula displays no discount available. When we press return, the value request discount appears in cell G3. Now click cell G3, grab the fill handle, and drag the fill handle down until it covers cell G14. When you release the left mouse button, Excel copies the formula from cell G3 to cells G4 through G14, adjusting the formula to reflect the cell's addresses. The results of the copied formulas appear in cells G4 through G14. 
Now in cell I3, type the formula equal average if left parentheses C3 through C14 comma double quote equal box double quote comma F3 through F14. This formula checks the values in cells C3 through C14. For every cell that contains the word box, cell adds the value in the same row from the range F3 through F14. When you press enter, the value $46,102.50, which represents the average cost per category of boxes, appears in cell I3. Now, in cell I6, type the formula equal, sum ifs, left parentheses, F3 through F14, comma, C3 through C14, comma, double quote, equal envelope, double quote, comma, E3 through E14, comma, double quote, equal international, double quote, and then a right parenthesis. What this formula does is it looks in the cell range C3 through C14. If one of those cells contains the value envelope, it looks in the range E3 through E14 for a cell in the same row that contains the word international. If the C cell and the E cell in the same row contain the values envelope and international, then Excel adds the corresponding value in the same row from the range F3 through F14. When we press the Enter key, Excel finds the total of all of those values, which is $45,753. In this segment of the course, we summarized data that meets specific conditions. In the next segment, we are going to find and correct errors in calculations. In this section of the course, we are performing calculations on data. In this segment, which is the final segment of the section, we will find and correct errors in calculations. In this movie, we will use the conveyor bid underscore start sample file. I have already opened that file and saved it under the name conveyor bid. To start, we click cell D20. And then on the formulas tab, in the auditing group, click watch window. When we do, the watch window opens. Now click add watch, and then in the add watch dialog box, click add. Clicking add adds the selected cell, which is first bid D20, the cell that is outlined here. Now click cell D8, and on the Formulas tab, in the Formula Auditing group, click the Trace Precedence button. A blue arrow begins at the cell range C3 through C7 and points to cell D8, indicating that the cells in the range C3 to C7 provide the values for the formula in cell D8. On the Formulas tab, in the Formula Auditing group, click the Remove Arrows button. When you do, the arrows disappear. Now click cell A1, and on the Formulas tab, in the Formula Auditing group, click the Error Checking button. The error checking dialog box opens, displaying the error found in cell D21. Click Next. 
When you do, Excel displays a message box indicating that there are no more errors in the worksheet. Click OK to dismiss the message box and close the error checking dialog box. Now on the formulas tab in the formula auditing group, click the error checking buttons arrow and then in the list that appears, click trace error. Blue arrows appear, pointing to cell D21 from cells C12 and D19. These arrows indicate that using the values, or lack of values in this case, in the indicated cells generates the error found in cell D21. On the Formulas tab in the Formula Auditing group, click Remove Arrows. When you do, the tracer arrows disappear. In the Formula box, delete the existing formula, and type equal C12 divided by D20 and press enter. Pressing enter causes the formula to be entered into the cell and the answer 14% appears in cell D21. Now click cell D21 and on the formulas tab in the formula auditing group click the evaluate formula button. In the Evaluate Formula dialog box, click the Evaluate button three times to step through the formula's elements and then click Close. The first step evaluates the statement of C12. In other words, it displays the value in cell C12. Clicking Evaluate again displays the value in D20. And clicking Evaluate a third time causes Excel to divide the value from C12 and the value in D20. Click Evaluate and there's the answer 14%. Now you can click Close to close the Evaluate Formula dialog box. Now in the Watch window, click the watch that is in the list and click Delete Watch the watch disappears. Now on the formulas tab in the formula auditing group click watch window. When you do the watch window disappears. In this segment of the course we found and corrected errors in calculations and that concludes this section on performing calculations on data. In the next section of the course we're going to change workbook appearance.